is there scientifically a better diet or nutrition plan that ultimately beats simply reducing your calories over an extended period of time? The answer scientifically is absolutely yes, but it's probably not what you think. In this video, we're going to talk about the missing pieces in this argument, with actual studies and research across both intermittent fasting and extended fasting, and all sorts of diets, compared to simply going low calories, or calories in calories out, and answer the question, which is actually the best for weight loss based on the science? My name is Joe Guevara, and I analyze the science and research behind fasting, nutrition, fitness, and longevity. If you want to support our science-based health and longevity content, watch through to the end of the video and check out our sponsors. Otherwise, let's get right into it. The basic argument for calories in versus calories out is the thermic effect of food. The amount of calories you consume in various forms must always equal the amount of energy you expel, whether you use, store, or dispose of it. And of course, this is basic biology and no one can deny this fact, which is what most people who are dismissive of any sort of diet and nutrition advice beyond calories and calories out default to as their primary argument. And yet studies like this one in 2020 looking at alternate day fasting versus calorie restriction show that there are differences between fasting and calorie restriction when it comes to weight loss. So what gives? When this calories in calories out argument is applied to the principle of diets and lifestyles, it forgets that people are people and not equations on the chalkboard. So regardless of where you sit in this debate, let me ask you a question first. What makes people fail at trying to lose weight? Is it because they simply don't understand or believe in this principle or they just don't have the willpower? A study in 2022 by Zhang et al. started to look at these across different variables, comparing intermittent fasting to calorie restriction, and while again, it did show that fasting was better for overall weight loss success compared to calorie restriction, it provided potential insights as to why. Ultimately, people fail at weight loss because humans have urges, desires, and motivations that influence how and even what you think. If I say, don't think of a pink elephant, what's going through your head? Probably a picture of a pink elephant. Many things impact our desires and thought processes, not the least of which is our environment and our personal histories, not to mention your social environment. Going on a diet isn't simply a matter of willpower because even your willpower is also influenced by something much deeper, your hormones. When I say hormones, these are the molecules in your body that influence the way you think. The simplest example related to diet and nutrition are the hormones leptin and ghrelin. These are the satiety and hunger hormones. I can guarantee that if you completely eliminate the hormone leptin from somebody's body, 100% chance, even with all the willpower and any standard diet in the world, they will become obese. In fact, science does indeed show this in a condition called congenital leptin deficiency, studied as recently as 2017. This effect of hormones expands to things far more profound, like oxytocin, otherwise called the love hormone, influencing our attraction to other people, testosterone at sufficient levels causing feelings of confidence or even aggressiveness, and of course, the most important hormones of our basic human motivations, dopamine and serotonin, influencing what we do every single day. And yet, when it comes to diet, everyone tries to boil down a person's relationship with food without even considering these facts, including many scientific studies. Even though there are plenty of studies that show that different things you do, like fasting, and especially the foods you eat, have a clear influence on your hormones as well. In fact, many of the things that lead to people being successful in losing and keeping off body fat are related to successfully managing these hormones through both your diet and your lifestyle. But the hormone psychology element is only half of the missing piece. The other half is your metabolism. But before we dive in, if you like this type of science-based health and nutrition content, Feel free to subscribe to our channel, bookmark our videos, and share our content with those you think it can help. So, metabolism. To explain this, let's look at this meta-analysis in 2020, looking at what happens to subjects when you do a calorie restriction program. While they go through a lot of data that actually supports all the benefits, some of which can actually be attributed to fasting-related calorie restriction, specific to our topic, they looked at five different studies from 1988 to 2016 that looked at this question. And here is the most interesting finding, and I quote, the poor physiological defenses against weight regain after calorie restriction may in part be explained by observations that metabolic adaptations are larger after weight loss and do not fully recover when weight is regained. Meaning that in the trials, the damage you do to your metabolism may not fully recover after an extended period of cutting calories. As it happens, studies on fasting have already known of protective effects to normal bodily processes that occur 
only in a fasted state. You can check out our fasting science series for more details. For example, human growth hormone getting released to act as a protective mechanism for healthy muscle tissue during autophagy. On the flip side, since insulin blocks fat loss and puts your body into a state of glucose metabolism, it prevents you from effectively using your body fat as fuel. And because those protective mechanisms like HGH aren't seen to happen in an unfasted state, what people assume is actually the complete opposite. When your body can't use fat for fuel, it'll break down muscles into glucose for energy through a process called gluconeogenesis. This is why you'll actually experience more muscle loss on a calorie restriction than if you ate nothing at all, which is an interesting shift in potential strategies on the traditional bulk and cut cycles for muscle building. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm actually pretty sure fasted protocols aren't the optimal approach if your only goal is building muscle. But if you value your longevity and health long term, I think it's the best balance compared to what bodybuilders have traditionally been doing. So that's the two biggest arguments that 99% of diet and weight loss advice fails to address, your psychology and hormones, as well as your metabolism. So does this mean that I've conclusively answered the question that fasting is always better than low calorie for weight loss? Absolutely not. If anyone tells you, whether it's on the internet, social media, or even in person, that a diet, nutrition plan, or lifestyle is going to be the best way to help you lose weight with 100% certainty without asking about your social environment, your history and relationship with food, the levels of hunger you get, what kind and how consistent your exercise routine is, and anything else, then it's no different than you entering a doctor's office and, without asking any questions, just prescribing you a pill. Diet and nutrition is so incredibly personal. I get it, people want a quick answer, a fast way to get results. And don't get me wrong, I do believe they exist and fasting protocols are probably one of the best ways for the vast majority of people to lose weight while improving their health. That being said, if you don't factor in your mind, your motivations, your social life, and even environment, no single piece of advice is gonna be a perfect fit unless you understand how the science impacts and gets impacted by all of these levers in your incredibly unique life. So what is the quick answer? Feed your brain with knowledge or work with somebody that can help you understand fundamental principles instead of just giving you random advice. Understand where you sit when it comes to your mind, motivation, social life, and environment, and fit them together to truly understand what the right path is for you to lose weight, become healthier, and live longer in a consistent and sustainable manner. That's the reason why I was inspired to build this channel in the first place, instead of just spoon feeding generalized advice that can potentially put some people on the rat wheel of just constantly failing like I did when I first started trying to lose weight. The science shows that compared to a calorie restricted diet, fasting means you can lose more weight in the form of fat, you keep more muscle, you have more energy, and you're less hungry. If proper weight loss is your goal, it's probably better to eat nothing at all rather than eating a conventional low calorie diet. But I think this 2023 meta-analysis by Le Ferrer says it best. While they found that fasting was indeed better for weight loss on a technical level, they go on to say, quote, The rigorous coaching and monitoring by trial staff also leaves open the question of whether time-restricted eating is easier to adhere to than intentional caloric restriction. Such cost-benefit analysis are important for the assessment of the scalability of a lifestyle intervention. Meaning, because your life and motivations are unique, your focus on consistency and sustainability of any lifestyle choice needs to come first before any specific diet or nutrition advice. That goes for anyone trying to preach their own success as the ultimate panacea for others. Just because it worked for you, it doesn't mean it works for everyone else. And with that, if you have your own stories about low calorie diets or fasting or any feedback, good or bad about this video, or requests for future videos you might wanna see, feel free to post them in the comments below. Also, if you want to support my channel, the sponsor of this video is Canadian Protein, my personal supplement source since 2015 because they have third-party lab-tested supplements, high-quality products, and cheaper wholesale prices. They do also have free shipping to both Canada and the U.S. and have lots more than protein, including some vegan items, so go to this address and check out their selection if you're looking at getting some quality supplements like creatine monohydrate and grass-fed whey protein isolate, my two staples for my own weight loss and muscle building journey. If you watched this far and enjoyed the content, please do subscribe and share this with those you think it can help so that we can continue to spread the word of the practical and scientific way to achieve health and longevity to others. I primarily post here on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, all at Rehash Fitness. 
Again, my name is Joe Guevara, and with that, I hope you all stay curious, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you all in the next one.